On June 1st, 2025, ordinary looking trucks drove across Russia. Flatbeds carrying wooden cabins, the kind you'd see on construction sites. But under these roofs were hidden compartments. Inside, more than a hundred small FPV drones, smuggled in pieces, assembled in secret, waiting for the signal. When the trucks reached their stops, the roofs lifted by remote control. One by one, drones climbed into the sky, and minutes later, some of Russia's most valuable military aircraft were burning on the tarmac. This operation, codenamed Spiderweb, took Ukraine's security service 18 months to plan. They smuggled drones across the border in parts, hid them under cabin roofs, even hired unsuspecting Russian truck drivers to haul them towards the bases. At the last moment, the drivers got a phone call telling them where to stop. The roofs opened and the drones launched. And what did they hit? Long range strategic bombers, the aircraft Russia uses to fire cruise missiles at Ukrainian cities. Planes worth hundreds of millions each, destroyed by drones that cost less than a second hand car. That's the price tag mismatch of our time. Cheap tech humiliating expensive empires. This is a story of scale, speed and access. How tools that anyone could make or learn, from the spear to the longboat to the FPV drone, repeatedly handed ordinary people the power to challenge elites, armies or entire militaries. And how each turn came faster than the last, leaving societies with less time to adapt. Here's a sense of scale. Around 300,000 years ago, humans sharpened sticks into wooden spears. It took nearly a quarter of a million years before the next big leap. By 64,000 years ago, stone-tipped spears and bows appear in Africa. Another 60,000 years later, by 3500 BCE, bronze weapons spread across Mesopotamia and Egypt. About 2,000 years after that, by 1200 BCE, iron weapons replaced bronze, cheaper, stronger and harder to stop. Then the leap sped up. By the 14th century, longbows rained on muddy European battlefields like Agincourt. By the 15th century, gunpowder cannons shattered castle walls. By the 19th century, muskets, rifles and mass artillery industrialised death. By the 20th century, in less than 100 years, tanks, fighter planes, missiles and nuclear weapons transformed war. And now, just in the past few years, hobby drones have become precision guided strike systems. The gaps keep shrinking. What once took millennia now takes decades or less. And that acceleration, not just the weapons themselves, is what we should worry about. Because every time, societies had less and less time to adapt. Let's start with this, the spear. Before anything fancy existed, humans used sharpened sticks, and then spears with stone tips for hunting and fighting. They were as simple as a pole and a point, cheap, robust and easy to teach someone to use in a matter of minutes. That's the point. Anyone could make one, and anyone could use one. Low cost, high impact. Now let's jump to the longbow. The English and Welsh longbow of the 14th and 15th centuries changed everything. A trained archer could fire up to 15 arrows a minute at long range. And crucially, longbows were cheap enough to arm farmers. At Cressy and Agincourt, masses of archers devastated mounted knights, piercing armour and stalling cavalry charges. The battlefield was no longer decided solely by nobles and plate armour. Put simply, a peasant who trained for years with a longbow could do what a knight had done for centuries, change the outcome of battle. Low cost, high impact. Gunpowder blurred the pattern. Suddenly, chemistry and mass manufacture mattered. Cannons toppled castles, muskets armed entire armies, and artillery industrialised death. The barrier to entry rose. You needed factories and finance. Now, the 21st century longbow. The FPV drone. FPV means first person view. Put on goggles and you fly it like playing a video game. Hobbyists built them for racing. Soldiers adapted them for war with grenades or warheads strapped on. Why does it matter? Because the economics are brutal. An FPV attack can be built for a few hundred dollars. Motors, batteries, a warhead. The targets? Tanks, air defense systems, aircraft, worth millions or tens of millions. Ukraine has mass produced and crowdsourced FPVs. Volunteers sold their frames in gyms and shipped them to the front lines. Government programs speak in the millions. And we've seen this escalate to an entirely new level. In June 2025, Operation Spiderweb showed what happens when you scale it up. Drone attacks on multiple air bases. One of the boldest attacks by Kyiv since Russia's invasion. Drones hidden under truck roofs launched deep inside Russia, across five air bases, thousands of kilometers from the front. 
they destroyed or damaged strategic bombers that carry nuclear capable missiles. Planes worth billions, gone in minutes. Low cost, high impact. Numbers help us understand this. One FPV attack build, under $500. A modern tank, several millions of dollars. An advanced air defense battery, tens of millions of dollars. So a swarm of drones worth a few thousand can degrade military assets worth hundreds of millions of dollars. FPVs live between hobby culture and military necessity. In Ukraine, government units deploy them, but volunteer groups, crowdfunded campaigns, and small workshops also churn them out. And it's not just staying in Ukraine either. Across Africa, rebel groups have begun strapping grenades to quadcopters. In Central and South America, cartels use drones for surveillance and bombings. Non-state actors are already seizing the same advantage. Low-cost drones that give them the reach of a modern air force, but crucially without owning one. But let's take a step back. They're short-range, fragile, and easy to jam. Their success depends on tactics, numbers, and surprise. Defenders use jammers, nets, interceptors. Artillery and air power still dominate. However, this is still just the beginning. AI is already flying some drones on its own. Swarms are being tested. Dozens of drones working together, overwhelming defenses. The next leap may not be about a single drone at all, but thousands acting like one. Look at the pattern again. Spears made violence personal and cheap. Longbows let commoners humble knights. Gunpowder shifted war to states with factories. And FPV drones give power to anyone who can solder, donate, or fly. Every time the cost curve drops, politics follow. And the timeline is shortening. Each era has less and less time to adjust before the next leap arrives. And here's the most unsettling part. If rebels, militias, and cartels can already use them, it's only a matter of time before individuals do too. A single soldering iron and a shopping cart full of parts can now build a weapon that once required factories and air bases. That's the heart of it. Lowering the barrier to entry doesn't just change battles, it changes who gets a seat at the table afterward. That's why states are worried and why volunteers in workshops or cartels in the jungle suddenly find themselves shaping the future of war. We started with a sharpened stick. Now we have pilots and goggles steering $500 drones into multi-million dollar machines. New tools have always remade power. But here's the difference. The gaps between those tools are collapsing. Change itself is accelerating. The real question is, who will write the rules this time? And will anyone have time to catch up? History is clear. When weapons become cheap enough for anyone to use, and arrive faster than anyone expects, the world rarely stays the same. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.